have a look at the hybridization that occurs uh, to a nitrogen atom when it forms ammonia. So here's a nice Lewis diagram of ammonia. Uh, I've drawn it in 3D so that we can see the geometry as well. And there's a few key points we need to mention about ammonia before we consider hybridization. First of all, I can see that the nitrogen is bonded to three other atoms and has one non-bonding pair of electrons. Uh, if I analyse this substance, we find that there is a molecular geometry of triangular pyramidal around my nitrogen. And therefore, given that I have one non-bonding pair of electrons, the electron geometry must be tetrahedral. So, in order to consider the hybridization here, let's consider first um, the orbital box diagram of a nitrogen. And in this case, I'm focusing only on the second energy level, so we're ignoring the 1s orbital. In the diagram here, you can see the 2s orbital and the 2p orbitals. So the first thing to note is that because nitrogen is only bonded to three atoms, it looks as though we've got three nice half-filled orbitals which could be used to form those bonds. However, the issue presented here is that my non-bonding pair of electrons at the moment is in an s orbital and if it was in an s orbital then we wouldn't get the nice um, electron geometry of tetrahedral because my electrons would not be located kind of above my nitrogen in the diagram there they'd be located in a kind of spherical s shaped orbital around the middle of it so we need a little bit of explanation as to why then nitrogen forms a electron geometry of tetrahedral in order to do so we are suggesting that a process of hybridization must occur so that all of my electrons are in hybrid orbitals. So to do that, what we're going to do is uh, suggest that the s and the p orbitals are going to mix or hybridize to form four hybrid orbitals which all have exactly the same energy. So it's going to look something like this if I redraw the box diagram. We've combined the s and the 3p orbitals there to form four new orbitals. And because those four new orbitals are all some kind of hybrid of s and 3p orbitals, each one is called an sp3 hybrid orbitals. And what you'll notice now is that all of my hybrid orbitals are of the same energy and would be the same shape. So all of my electrons are in identical orbitals. Now if we draw the shapes of this to try and make a little bit more sense, uh, the start point for a nitrogen atom was something like this. After that process of hybridization, we've created four hybrid orbitals, which are all identical in shape, and they're all called sp3 hybrid orbitals. So if I now arrange those four orbitals around my nitrogen atom to minimise repulsion between them, we end up with something that looks like this. Here you can see that my nitrogen is able to form three sigma bonds by overlapping with the s orbital on the hydrogen. And conveniently for us now, we don't have that lone pair in an s orbital, we've got it in a hybrid orbital, which is the same shape as the other ones. Now if we go back to the structure that we can identify from analysis of ammonia, we have beautifully solved our problem because we get a nice tetrahedral electron geometry, worth being specific there, electron geometry, because my lone pair of electrons is now in a hybrid orbital as well. And perhaps the key point from, from this video is really just to know that a lone pair of electrons will also need to be in a hybrid orbital, which means uh, that process of hybridization must occur, uh, whether it's a nitrogen or an oxygen or something similar. Uh, hopefully uh, that was of some help.